Last up is Reading-based Chang Lu, who hopes to follow in the footsteps of the Tesla founder, one of the richest entrepreneurs on the planet. Elon Musk really inspires me, and I wanted to be someone like him, really making a difference to the, to the world. Well, this one looks exciting. A bit like something out of a George Orwell movie at the moment. Chang hopes his business will be the perfect example of how man and machine can work together in perfect harmony. Our vision is really in the future that we can create a cohesive relationship between human and, and robot that ensures the technology benefit humanity, not destroying the humanity. Hello, Dragons. My name is Chang. I'm the founder of Extend Robotics. I come to ask Dragons for 150,000 investment in exchange of 5% of our equity stake. Technology will replace jobs, but we believe no one should be left behind and everyone can be part of this revolution. So Extent Robotics is building an intuitive human robot interface software to help people to work remotely by operating robots through our immersive virtual reality interface. This way, their job can be safer, less travel, and even access to global job opportunities. We're pre-trading, but with your help, we can transform the way we live and work and make our world a better place. Uh, I would like to invite one of the dragons to, uh, to try this. Go on, Stephen. <sighs> OK. Is that because you need to be young to be able to no, operate? No, it's because I'm going to put that headset on and it's going to ruin my hair. An augmented reality interface that allows humans to control robots in a different location is the proposition on offer from Chang Lun. <laughs> so I'm coming up around the back of this puppy. Yeah, you can try to grasp the tails or, or legs. Ooh. He's asking for £150,000 in exchange for 5% of his business. And then you can lift it on top of the box and release. Let me go, let me go. Oh. oh, tickle his tummy, tickle his tummy now. He's a good boy. <laughs> Despite failing in Operation Place the Puppy in the Box, the interactive demo has intrigued Stephen Bartlett. Interesting. But Deborah Meaden is first to interface with the entrepreneur, and she wants a better understanding of how Chang's technology could change the world. Can you be really clear on the usage that you see? Because you must have been thinking when you were designing it, oh, this would be good for that, and this would be good for that. Yeah, so firstly, healthcare, where you maybe need some experts from a far away distance that you don't have locally. So remote expertise, yeah. Yeah, so the second area is, is more industrial inspection and maintenance. An, an example is the uh, nuclear decommissioning. And three. And the third one is hospitality. So we've been trialing our system with several UK restaurants that's actually doing the bartending robots for them. Um, do you have a sense of how much this is going to cost? Yeah, so uh, the, the general system, the hardware, would cost around uh, five to six uh, thousand. So our business is to sell the uh, license for our software, ranging from uh, 2,000 to 5,000, depending on what robot it is. For this particular one, it's about 1,500 for the license. Okay. Deborah Meaden discovers that Chang's business model has more than one revenue stream. But Stephen Bartlett wants to nail down when the concept will start creating cash. When do you think you'll be making money? It's probably quite soon because we already have uh, universities in interest of, of collaborating where they have a robot in, in care home that's taking care of the elderly. On that specific application in the care home, can you describe to me exactly what the technology will do in that care home? So basically, it's a, it's a care home robot that can run around with robot arms and maybe 20% of the task is automatable. There's still 80% that still require human operations. And yeah. why is that robot better than a human in that use case? Uh, because that allows people to serve elderly much more easily. Uh, What's the current problem with human serving the elderly? Well, we'll be having labor shortage. Uh, we'll be having more elderly people than we, we are able to serve with the current uh, labor. For me, it just feels like it's some way off. 
being able to put a robot into a care home, then I do feel quite sad about the fact that my granddad in a care home will be served his meal by a robot. I don't necessarily know if that's a future that I want to buy into either. I mean, it doesn't stop you from going in person, but it's an option. If, for example, daddy wants to have a pill that, that is urgently needed, and he just needs someone to pick it up for him, and that will be a big problem if, it, if it's late. Chang's pitch begins to malfunction as Stephen Bartlett questions the ethics of replacing care workers with computerized droids. Tuka Suleiman now wants to get a glimpse of the business's future and find out if there'll be a pot of gold at the end of this robotic rainbow. So for the first 12 months, what do you plan to turn over? 200K. And how much will you burn in that first 12 months? A little bit less than 1 million. So if you're going to lose a million pound next year, then you're going to raise more money. Yeah. So we're, we're planning for next, next year's for the 1 million round. Whoa. So really, if one is taking a five-year view or a 10-year view, my 5% will probably be 0.5%. By the time you've raised and raised and raised, that's the problem. You know? mm. So if I invest today, by the time it starts making money, I'll be down to hardly anything. I'll lose interest. But I guess this is the future, and I'm going to leave it for the young ones to invest. So for that reason, I'm out. Diminishing equity and slow returns are not enticing for Tuka Suleiman, and he terminates his part in the proceedings. Does marketing whiz kid Stephen Bartlett share Chang's vision for his technological mission? For technology like this, you need to have, typically, I think, a really clear entry to the market, where you say, this is where we're going to introduce our technology and get the world used to it. If you had to pick one of the three applications you talked about earlier, which one do you really think is going to be the, the place where this takes off? Uh, well, so far from what we have uh, in terms of tractions, majority is around uh, healthcare. Give me a really specific example in healthcare. Close suction, for example, for COVID patients. What's close suction? So it's basically you have a tube that needs to go into the throat and you need to regularly changing that tubes for the patient that's using the ventilator. So for this technology to be useful in that application, you'd need real precision robotics. Mm -hmm. And what I experienced, I couldn't even pick up a dog. So getting to the point where I can't pick up a dog to the point where we're willing to trust the robotics to put a, a tube into the throat of someone that's severely ill feels like a long way off. The absolute crisis we'd have if one thing went wrong once. So for us to get there, the amount of testing and evidence and trust we'd have to have in precision robotics, to me, feels like we're about five years off. And also, you're probably going to need an eight-figure investment yeah. for you to stand a chance, because there are other competitors that are raising nine-figure investments in this space that are way further ahead and as an investor, for me at this stage, it just feels like too high a risk to take. So for that reason, I'm gonna have to say that I'm out. Stephen Bartlett deems Chang's visionary venture too expensive and walks away from the deal. Does Deborah Meaden believe this augmented reality can become commercial viability? It's just really, really hard to evaluate the technology and how far it has to go, how much time it's going to take and how much money it's going to take. I'm not a, you know, I take risk, but I don't like jumping into the dark. So I'm really sorry. I really wish you all the best, but I'm out. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Deborah. Chang, um, some of what you've told me today I, I like and I'm on board with, other bits I, I don't like. I don't like the thought that even by the time old man he is in a care home, it might be a robot delivering these nighttime pills. But I do appreciate and accept you are not the one making the decision on where the world's heading. You are just going with the flow and facilitating that. Mm -hmm. But I think to do that, you need people and investors on board who can be influential and can assist on that journey. And that's not me. So I won't be investing today, and I'm out. Two more dragons exit the deal, making Peter Jones Chang's last hope for investment.
has the entrepreneur's cyber science caught the imagination of the tech tycoon? I was sitting here, I was just asking Stephen, because I can't, I was, for the life of me, I've just been going off my little world with the Avengers. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the, the guy that puts the suit on, Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Ah. Oh. Yeah. That's Tony Stark. Tony Stark. He's the crazy, like, inventor. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of interesting, because it's sort of Iron Man without the travel. Yeah. So you, you actually don't have to get into the robotic suit. That's exactly what we're doing, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting space because I do think sort of augmenting humans with the utilization of VR is definitely something um, that will be permanent in our society. You can see a time where you could say, tonight we've got Gordon Ramsay coming to our restaurant. Exactly. You know, you could end up with a Deborah Meaden robot giving you business advice, but gonna... Deborah's at home in, in Yeah, in definitely Devon. not food, definitely not cooking. Not cooking, you're, no. No, you're pretty appalling at that, aren't you? Yeah, I'm appalling. But no, I do find it interesting that you could be anywhere, and this is your element of transportation. So I really like it. Um, and I'm gonna make you an offer. And I'm gonna offer you all of the money but I want 25% because I think that so many businesses like you've created spend a lot of money and end up in a, in a robotic graveyard. And I think I can help you get to a different place with it. I appreciate your offer. That's really, really encouraging. Okay, let me think about it. Do you want to talk to the robot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome, yeah. thanks. Peter Jones buys into the vision and makes a bid. But in return for the 150,000 pounds, he wants five times more than the 5% equity that's on the table. Will the entrepreneur accept the terms or push for a better deal? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would like to accept your offer. Great. Yeah. Great. Great. Fantastic. Wow. <laughs> Chang has done it. Well, you've just got yourself a Dragon's Den Iron Man. <laughs> he bags himself a super investor. Thank you. And brings some business deal to his futuristic firm. Well, it's like magic. This is happening. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm, I'm sure working with Peter will really change the future of extended robotics and ultimately changing the future of humanity. I think it might be the Robert Downey Jr. image I think that we've got going yeah, on here. No, it agree. just needs a jetpack and yeah. he'll be off. <laughs>